Hello, Misha in Alabama. You're wondering about that little cub with the sort of gammy hip or gammy leg and whether it's recovered or not. It seems to me, if I'm not mistaken, all the cubs were present yesterday and I'm going to have to ask for confirm confirmation from Viem. Viem, is that true? Yes. All eight yesterday. And all fine. Was the limp still there? He didn't notice any. Viem said he, at least Viem says he doesn't notice any limp at all. But they weren't very active. So but the fact that it's now, what are we saying, two and a bit weeks after that injury took place, the cub is still alive, indicates to me that perhaps things are going to be all right. Listen. And she's chewing something called a baboon's tail. She, I say. We know that what, there's at least one male here and one female. And I'm not sure what the others are at this stage. Thank you. A lovely a question from someone called Recalcitrant Old Bag in California. Um, recalcitrant Old Bag, you want to know if the lions leave a babysitter when they go, <laughs> when they go hunting. Um, rec I, I can't refer to you as Recalcitrant Old Bag. I mean, that would just be rude. Um, recalcitrant Old Bag, they don't, no. Uh, sometimes they do. Well, in fact, normally they don't. Like she, will, she will stash them in a thick bush, go off hunting and then come back and feed them with milk. But they're completely unlike, say, uh, wild dogs, which always leave a babysitter, or well, if the pack's big enough, they'll leave a babysitter. Um, in the case of that little pack of three that we've been seeing, for example, it's unlikely that they would leave a babysitter because they need all hands on deck, as it were. But lions don't do that. Uh, leopards obviously don't because they're solitary. And hyenas don't either. Sometimes hyenas will leave a nursemaid at the... At the, at the den site, but very often uh, the cubs just stay there on their own. Very sweet. Vim, it's not really bright enough for a man of my photography skills today. It'd be easy. <laughs> and in the background, a lot more bird song today for some reason. The orange breasted bushrike. Robins, doves, hornbills, Franklins. And in front of us, little lions playing with the baboon's tail. <laughs> ah, yes. I think if there was ever a debate about the leopard versus lion cubs, well, look at these things. You know, James Richard, I think you're probably absolutely correct when you suggest that a lion ness would be reticent about introducing her cubs to the pride if they were on a kill. Uh, yeah, and I think the reason for that, as I'm sure that you've guessed correctly, is that their blood is up. They are ready to fight. They fight each other tremendously over food. They don't share food with each other. And so, yeah, I would say absolutely. Uh, a lioness would be very reticent to introduce her cubs to a pride uh, during the feeding time. They are too sweet, these things. Isn't that sweet? Listen to the robin in the background.
Oh, look. Managed to miss that one, Vim. <laughs> Let's look at the lines. No, you can't see my photographs. They're too ugly. This is fantastic. I don't wish to go anywhere. <laughs> Ali, you say... <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to ask Louise to read that again. You'll comment about the, the cubs and what they're, what they're saying to each other. Ah. Grrr, I'm going to get you, tree. I'm a rough and tumble little lion cubby. Well, you are indeed. I'm just going to quickly get on the radio. Andrew, about a one out of five visual for two vehicles, but you can try and make your way in here. We're on Glory Pan Road. Very, very special. <laughs> and interesting, you know, yesterday that story of um, them being perhaps introduced for the first time to the Pride. Uh, I think that's a good interpretation from Brent uh, yesterday. But it's it's interesting. I wonder if it's uh, if it's a quick thing that happens or if it happens over a period. So perhaps it wasn't the very first time they'd seen them, and perhaps it takes a bit of time for those lionesses to get used to the cubs and for the rest of the pride to start to tolerate them. So, I mean, you read that at six weeks they get introduced to the pride. I don't. It's obviously a process that takes place, as they're not staying with the other cubs at the moment. Sarah, you're wondering what that plant is that they're eating. It is something called baboon's tail. Zero fighter retinervous. Now, yeah, it's very nice. 